Welcome back. The topic I'm going to cover today is probably the most requested topic on this channel, and the topic is how to get into AI. Probably the each second question I get is this question. So I decided to finally make this video where I will structure my approach, my knowledge, how anybody, absolutely anybody can do it from absolutely zero level, from scratch up to hero level, from the level where you can apply for a job or you can get a job or as AI or a male engineer or even researcher. So in this video, I will cover my experience, the knowledge I have from the speaking to other people and from the browsing internet, because some resources are very popular and everybody should know them. So I'm going to share them with you. Also, I'm going to share the resources which I, I use even now. And a part of that, I will also include some materials from uh, Facebook AI reading list, which is reading list for people inside Facebook who start as in some role as ML or AI engineer or researcher and who need to well get started with it. So there are some resources which are highly recommended, which you may expect are very good. So I will include them as well. So let's start. It will be a very structured approach. It will have it will be like a pyramid of four stages. It also will split on two parts: practical and theoretical. Because machine learning and AI is always a combination of these two parts: so your theoretical knowledge and your practical skills. So let's start from the ground level, the first level where you may encounter and the basic skills you need anyway. And from the theoretical part, it will be, of course, the uh, skills of calculus and math. So basically, any course you can find or take on linear algebra or statistics and probability, more like both of them, you will need both of them. You have to take them because you will use it in your work and most likely you will need it sooner or later, but you will need it. And this is basis for all the next theory. So you need to know it. Any course, any book, whatever you can take, it will work. Because the mass is the same everywhere. From the practical side, you will need, I would say, Python skills. So just start with basic tutorials on Python. Like without any frameworks, without any machine learning stuff, just learn Python as a language, as a synthesis, and it will be good. And you will get this first stage, this ground level. Moving on to the next stage, um, again, talking about the radical part, when you know the linear algebra and stats, you can start watching some online courses or reading books on deep learning and machine learning in general. There are a lot of very good resources on that. Um, I will just tell them a few of the most popular ones. Um, so, from such, you, we have Deep Learning Book by Young Godfellow. It's a very good resource, but it's a book. We also have good online courses from universities, such as we have a very famous course from Stanford, CS231N. It was is very like it was one of the first courses, and I, I personally think this is the best resource because I was following it, and I learned most of the stuff I know from it from the Stanford two three one M when it was, when it was um, given by Andre Karpaty. But still, this course is still very good, and you can find it on YouTube. You can find notes. It's all open. Also, I heard that MIT just released their online course on deep learning, just like this spring, so you can follow it now and they will release new lectures each week, which I also think should be very, very good. Um, yeah, of course, people talk a lot about course of on machine learning from Andrew and G on Coursera. I think it's good and uh, yeah, you will have to start from basic machine learning stuff before moving to deep learning and uh, you should understand that and don't try to skip it because you will need it anyway especially when you will start interviewing for job positions most of the interviews is just basic machine learning very rarely people ask you about deep learning stuff immediately 
Um, yeah, so Andrew NG course is very popular, but there are also a lot of different resources on that subject. I also heard FastAI, uh, which is a very good learning portal for just getting basic skills on deep learning, like basic knowledge and on theory. So give it a try. So this was a theoretical part, but I also have practical part which you also try to develop. So now when you have basic skills of Python, you can actually start learning some machine learning or deep learning uh, libraries and frameworks. So for machine learning and statistics, we have Pandas, which is very good to know, and also have NumPy, which you also have to learn. And after that, you can start with PyTorch and TensorFlow. Uh, you may choose one of them, but knowing both is also good and they are honestly very similar. So just start with them and for now just follow the, um, their tutorials on their website. So not something random on the internet, but just start from the official tutorials. And for this stage it will be enough. The second stage is the most important because you get, you get basic knowledge on machine learning and deep learning and I would say it would be the most influential for you and would will help you to understand is it really yours or not, do you like it or not. But if you pass this level, you can move next on the level 3. And on this level, when you have some basic knowledge of theory, like, like from books, you can actually start reading research papers. Research paper is where all this science and all the theory come from. So it's the most recent knowledge people publish. But at this point, you should just start from the, I would say, classical research papers. Particularly for deep learning, we can tell about uh, ImageNet paper, ResNet paper, the BERT paper for NLP. Uh, and yeah, this should be good. I call just three, but there are very good reading lists, particularly for publications, so for different papers. Uh, I can tell you a few and I will add all of them in the description, so check it, check it down. It's a deep learning net reading list, it's just list of uh, good influential research papers which like everybody should know. Then um, Fluid Sung deep learning reading list, or like you call it roadmap, which is also very useful to have. And there's also a very long list of papers for Mila students. Mila is a AI research lab in Toronto, I guess, where the head is Joshua Benjo, like one of the fathers of deep learning. So it's a very cool lab and their reading list is may may maybe quite complex if you're not prepared, but it definitely will be useful for you. And personally, I would also recommend to read uh, different blogs. Particularly, I would recommend a uh, blog of Andre Karpati who started this CS231 course in Stanford. He doesn't write too much now, but existing posts are very good. Really from theoretical side and from practical aspects, they are very useful and also very good to know. Uh, so that was again on the theoretical part and we have practical part. When you already learn something about libraries and frameworks and you did all the uh, their official tutorials, so now you can actually can move to more advanced tutorials and to do to implement try to implement more advanced algorithms with random tutorials and lessons you can find on the internet. Just search like how to implement transformer in PyTorch or something like that or generative networking TensorFlow you will find something and you can try to do that yourself. And you first you repeat, you try to run it, if it works you may at that point, you already may have some ideas how you can modify it or how you can improve it, and it's also very good to do, as it shows your understanding. And at this stage, I would say you're already quite an experienced candidate. If you read all those literature and you did all those uh, tutorials so you can implement different stuff and you know how it works, it's actually already quite good to do something on your own. So now we move to the next stage, which is the last, where from the theoretical side, 
there is not much more to learn in general. Now you need to learn like in the depth. You need to choose some particular topic which you want to uh, study or you want to be expert in because you cannot capture everything. No matter how much you want, you just cannot do it. So whether you choose some particular topic in computer vision, like generation of images or some face recognition or something in NLP like question answering, you probably will find something which you like and then you can just start to read new papers on this topic. Like this process never stops. You will always have to read new papers and follow all the news, like what people do and which new algorithms um, appear. Um, so I'll do that. Also, I would like to, I would advise to subscribe for different news channels or mailing lists, which just send you weekly some updates on general like what's general happening in the world, in of course like ML AI world. From those. I can, I can recommend Budge. It's a very good uh, mailing list from Andrew and J Group, which is again one of the fathers of deep learning. It is like for ML AI in general. And for NLP in particular, I would recommend Sebastian Rudder, which is also a very good specialist. And he writes very good uh, review on different new algorithms for publications, for recent publications. There are a lot of different channels, like in Slack, in Twitter, wherever. Uh, we also have like, of course, we have archive, we have different conferences. Uh, there's also a Distill, which is like online publishing system platform. I'm not really sure what is it, but some oh, there are a lot of good materials are there. So don't expect this part to finish anywhere soon because We'll just have to do it all the time if you will work in this field, just to catch up and be like up to date, uh, know what's going on around, and how your work actually fits in the image of the world today. Uh, yeah, so don't approach it too aggressively because you will not be able to read a lot of papers every day. Like, keep it moderately, because it's a long shot game. And last we have the last part, just practical side of this highest level. When you already know pretty much how to implement any algorithm you know or you like to implement, because you followed all these tutorials um, and you try different things, and you finally can do something on your own. So at this point you have different options how to get more experience, like just hands-on experience. So first you can start your own project, Something simple, like some time projects which you will show to your friends or something more serious which you will deploy and will attract some users so, so different people can use it. It's very useful and it's very interesting to show something uh, which people use. On the other hand, you can also um, contribute to open source projects, just like different big ML frameworks have a lot of work which different people, different people support and contribute. Again, it's very useful experience, a bit different from the first one, but it's useful experience of working in a team and contributing to different big projects and like recruiters and other people appreciate it. And of course, like if you, it's possible, you can start to try, um, you can try to find internship. Not always is possible, but if you are able to to get some initial like entry level job in some company like in industry it's also very good to gain some experience and to add it to your cv so basically you just try to get some experience some experience in any way possible uh, because once all these four stages are done and level four you cannot really done you can't really finish it will continue, it will continue to work but when you feel that you already know something and you have some experience and not only you know it, but you can also uh, prove it somehow, show, show it somehow with some projects or some experience of working in a company to put it in your CV, then you, start, you can start applying to more serious roles like full-time jobs. Basically, you are 
all set to start your work as a professional. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I will put all the links and all the resources I mentioned in the description, so you, can, you will be able to find them easily. And I hope it was useful for you. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them. And one more thing, all the stuff I told you, it's applicable to work in any capacity, either engineer or researcher. Uh, because these are basics which you need to know anyway. But at some point in your career, you will have to actually decide which track you want to follow. Do you want to be an ML engineer or you want to be an ML researcher? I only say that don't hire with this decision because I met a lot of people who tell that they want to be, they want to do research, but they don't really understand what researchers do. So it looks quite silly. Um, yeah, don't hire with this decision. And in one of the next videos, I will actually try to explain you what's the difference between these two roles, engineer and researcher. So I hope it was useful for you. As I said, leave comments if you have any more questions. And see you next time. Bye. I miss those California nights with you. There's no way I could get over you. Walk away to fucking drunk with some girls you don't even compare to.